listening to The Hard Point with One Punch Dad and Code Roams. Welcome, everybody, back to the hard point. My name is One Punch Dad. I, again. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Cody. I go by Code Roams. I thought I was being smooth, man. I, I got all jumbled up. It's been a it's been a been quite a run up today. And we're joined by a very, very, very special guest today. My dear friend, Tyler Butterworth is with us. Welcome to the show, buddy. Insert crowd Hi. noise. Thanks. Insert crowd Thanks noise. Thanks for having me. Insert <laughs> yeah. <crowd noise. sighs> <laughs> we're glad you're here buddy um 21st episode uh 21 deep can't believe it uh i am uh i'm flattered that you joined us today man this it's a big deal to have you here yeah man happy to be here thank you for being here yeah. my new friend Tyler <laughs> Butter. Yeah. <laughs> new friends uh uh how you guys doing this week it's been it's easter week it's a busy week for most families in america how are we getting by? I'm good. I'm fresh off a of steak lunch, so I had a, I had a nice little Easter. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> I, my wife yeah, brought I'm home. Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, the kids are on their way home from grandma's. We had a uh, we had an unusual Easter where my parents took the kids to the great grandmother's house. So it was just the wife and I this weekend. So it was oh good time. Nice. Those uh uh once uh, once you start having kids, man, those become like a little, a tiny little treasure, that you don't yeah. realize you're gonna love so much. But man, I remember having. I remember very specifically like our first overnight without kids as parents, and it was several years after we started having kids. Uh it's a big deal. It's a big yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah. It's a big deal. Well, congrats yeah. to you guys. Cody actually is expecting his first child that's due here in a few uh, a few months. Actually, it's kind of it's kind of upon us. It's getting close. Man, we are like officially about two months away. That's wild. You know what you're having? Yeah, uh, yeah, we're having a little girl. Nice. And so yeah, first one. Super excited. Actually, just last weekend we painted uh, her room. Not the entire thing. Um, it was a wall. And when's the last time you guys painted something? It's been about a year. Cause it sucks. <laughs> yeah, actually, this wall behind me, I painted that uh, a couple months ago. I think. Okay. A beautiful OD green, I might add. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Very it, nice. Yeah. Paint. It was a single wall, and it was way more than what we like. The work, the taping, barely had enough paint. You know, just <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> way more than I paint. thought. Yeah. I, I paint to me is one of those jobs that like you're looking at it and you're like, it's not that bad. Right. You just slap it up there. You just you slap it up there. You walk away. Right. But there's the taping to me is the biggest, the biggest yeah. pain in the, in the neck. And then also like ex exhausting for me that there's so much of like holding your hands above your heads, like to get yep. those, yeah. those spots. That's exhausting. We did we so we got like one of the rollers that you could hold with your hand, but then every video I was watching afterwards had like the extendo stick yeah. that you screwed it into and you could go top to bottom. I didn't have that. So I had to run up a ladder and then run down the ladder, run up the ladder and run down the ladder. And it was <laughs> is, is yeah. that the uh is that the formal name for that? An extendo stick? Extendo stick. <laughs> From the makers of short stick, it's an extendo yeah. stick. Yeah. Yeah. You just <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. it's fine. It, speaking of right before when we were saying like, we're the only ones that would notice a little thing being wrong, you know, like where the paint bled through the tape a little bit on one of the sides, like me and my wife are looking at it and I'm like, that looks terrible. <laughs> and she's like, nobody is ever, ever going to notice that except us. It's like the tiniest little bleed through. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. 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 Oh yeah. Um, well, cool. Cool. Uh, that seems like a good natural uh, natural pause there. Uh, I'd like to roll right into our first segment, which we've been doing for the last couple of weeks here, called What Are You Crushing? 
Uh, let's kick it to Tyler since he's our guest today. Tyler, what what are you crushing, man? Um, I guess what am I crushing in the terms of like a show I'm watching? Uh, let's see, where did I just come from? Texas. That's where I just came yeah. from, and I'm going to LA tomorrow. Nice. Uh, Busy so man. when I'm on the plane, I like to download different movies or YouTube videos of stuff I'm trying to learn. So. I have been crushing sound design, trying to learn that uh, by watching YouTube videos. Nice. But as far as like a show that I've been watching, it's something on Netflix. I can't remember the name of it. It's, uh, I'm trying to think how to Is describe it. Is it a newer it. show? It's kind of like a, uh, what's that? Is it a newer show? It's a newer show. It's like in the top 10 right now. Hold on. Go to my trusty tablet here. It's kind of like a crime thing about a uh, weed and, I don't know how to describe it. I'll just is it an it. actual show or is it like a documentary? It is. Yeah. Uh, the gentleman, that's the gentleman. The okay. That's why. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I've Have seen, you guys seen it? I've seen uh, commercials for it. It looks, it looks pretty good. It's we watched really good. Yeah. the first episode. The ending of first episode is pretty wild. <laughs> um, yeah, and the, then, yeah, yeah. I mean, no spoilers, but, uh, Do you... and then I think I fell asleep during the second one, but we're going to get back into it. It's really good. Do you, you, you mentioned kind of like studying as you watch now that you're kind of because you really, you know, in the creator space, I would say you produce what I consider to be the most pristine quality of stuff you can just find for free on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram. Has it flipped since you started making content to where now instead of like, oh, I'm just going to watch whatever Lord of the Rings or, you know, Seinfeld or whatever. Do you now kind of approach everything you watch with kind of a like, oh, let's see, they they kind of ignored the <laughs> yeah. rule of thirds there. Uh, oh. Look at these nerds. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I uh, <laughs> I don't know. I I honestly I don't watch much TV. I don't watch much movies anymore. Um, I used to even when I was still learning the the videography and audio stuff and all that. Like in the beginning, I would I would watch stuff, but I rarely do now. When I do, I. Uh, instead of focusing on like the technical aspects of something like how how something is shot or different gimbal movements that they use or whatever it is what interests me the most in any show or or movie that i watch is how the storyline progresses and the creative ways that they advertise or market things to the viewer that's what i think is like super interesting and that's what i pick up on more than like Oh, that that uh, lookup table that they use there is a really nice color grade. But... <laughs> 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 like, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. The gentleman, gentleman. I'll have to add that to my list. Uh, it's Co really good. Yeah, it's really good. Definitely, definitely. Cody, what are you crushing, man? All right, buddies. This is a a safe space, right? <laughs> we'll see. Hold on, I'm gonna write it down. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> no judgment. All right, we're all friends here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Me and my wife have been watching Young Sheldon. Oh God. Really? Huh. I don't know, man. I thought you were gonna say, uh, what's that other show? Uh, uh not ninety day fiance, the other Love is Blind. I oh, thought you were gonna say that. Huge fans. Yeah, I love that show. He loves Love <laughs> is Blind. It's <laughs> you can't not watch it. Yeah, it's so okay. I'm not gonna try and sell you on Young Sheldon because I can't. I can't. I she was watching all of it, yeah, and I would just kind of like drop in and out of episodes, and it's funny. That's all I'll say. It's funny. <laughs> I'm not gonna encourage you. I'm not gonna even recommend it. But if you happen to watch yourself in the or catch yourself in the middle of a a Young Sheldon episode, you might enjoy it. I, I will say I have no interest in watching Young Sheldon, but I have, for whatever reason, wound up on the corner of TikTok that is like nothing but Sheldon edits. It's all clips and edits from that show. And people, like, it has a strong support base out of nowhere. Weird. I've um, never watched The Big Bang Theory, like not even a second of it. So I, I just, I don't know. Um, it's pretty funny now. It's pretty funny. Uh, Don't go watch it. I'm not recommending it. <laughs> what I've been crushing. <laughs> Fine. I'll allow it. What about you, Josh? What do you got? Uh, so I too, I too am on a bit of a Netflix kick. Um, the past, uh, past couple weeks, as you know, I was watching Tiger King again. Uh, we've, we've mm -hmm. finally rounded out our Tiger King rewatch. I've watched <laughs> everything Tiger King related that there is. And all I have to say uh, in conclusion for that is 
if people own giant cats, they're probably a piece of shit. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's what it boils down to. That's what it boils down to. You got a giant <coughs> cat in your yard, you're probably a piece of shit. Um, not one redeemable quad- quality among those people. Um, yeah. So I just don't know how you could financially recover from uh, exactly <laughs> from being such a tool bag. That none, not <laughs> one normal, non like everyone on those shows is morally reprehensible on some level, and it's just like kind of a bummer. So coming off of the Tiger King thing, my wife and I were like, we need something that is kind of the opposite of that. Cause that was a bummer. Uh, it does not leave you with like a good perspective on humanity. Uh, so we got on to watching something that I never thought I was going to like, but I love, which is love on the spectrum. Re- really? Yes. Wait, why does that get a pass and love is blind? Does it? <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't say love it. I would like to discuss this in full detail. Now. Okay. Are you, are why you, do you like it? Why I, do you like it? I like it for 100% for its wholesome wholesomeness. It is so have you, have, have either of you watched it? I've, no. I've seen like uh, tidbits of it. Yeah. So it is for anyone who doesn't know love on the spectrum is people who are on the autism spectrum entering into the dating space. So they're, going on blind dates they're going on uh what are they called speed dating um Mm -hmm. they're meeting up with people trying to and these are people that span the spectrum of like you don't even realize they're autistic they're kind of like i don't know what the appropriate word is like high functioning i guess um to very apparent you know like like you can definitely read the the these people are autistic and they go sure. on dates, some with normal people, as normal people, some people without autism and some people with, uh, you know, who also have autism or some, you know, there's a couple of them go on a date with people with Down syndrome, things like that. It is 100 percent like absolutely what we needed. It's very, uh, it's very wholesome. And it absolutely if you watch something that is a complete bummer, watch <laughs> Love is Blind or not Love is Blind. Don't watch Love is Blind. Watch Love Don't on the Spectrum. Do. <laughs> Me, love, it too. love is blind is fine, but Love on the Spectrum cannot cannot recommend enough, man. We we've okay. been crushing the hell out of that show. Is that on Netflix? It is. Yeah. There's a okay. so it's there's an Australian version. I don't know if the Love is Blind Australia is on Netflix, but Love is Blind US is on. Is See, on Netflix. he's getting them mixed up now. Keep saying love ah, is blind. I said love is blind. Yeah. <laughs> love is blind. Spectrum. Love on the spectrum. Love on the spectrum. Love on the spectrum. Got you in US a chokehold, bro. Netflix. I know. Yeah, I need to watch that one too, I guess. I don't know. The premise is interesting, but uh, reality TV is tough for me to to buy into. Oh, it's are you talking about Love is Blind? Yeah. Oh man. Have you that so you, you watch like, it? It is comedy gold watching that. Like <laughs> I just I die laughing every time I watch it. It's yes. So I would funny. like to say I watch it a little ironically. Like I watch it because it's funny and dramatic, <laughs> not because it's like super serious or anything like that. Yeah. It's, no, no, no. It seems like a joke premise, like a situation that it, you would put these people into. They take it seriously, but. Oh my God. <laughs> it, so my <laughs> wife and I, we actually just wrote two little skits that we're going to do as a uh, individual little like minute long videos uh, to put on here on Instagram and YouTube and whatever based on love is blind uh but <laughs> oh, if boy. love is blind if we had already met and everything we're already married and everything but then you, you'll see it'll be it'll be pretty good <laughs> i but can't wait that it, sounds it's all awesome. based on like the mannerisms and the words they use in the show like they everybody says the same thing and reacts the same way to different things like it's just it's amazing i love it i gotta i gotta i gotta see what all this is about man i gotta see if y'all are oh, yeah. being straight with me on love is blind so you'll love it. Well, love so on the good. love on the spectrum as a as a perhaps an appetizer or hors d'oeuvre to love is blind. Maybe sure uh, can't recommend yeah. that enough. It is very wholesome. Um, Tyler, again, thank you for for joining us today. I wanted to kind of pick your brain. You and I have have met in person, which is uh, that was a real treat. We got to hang out last summer, make a couple videos. Um, hoping we get to do that again soon. Uh, you just been on the war path, man. You you know have been making videos now do you remember when you posted your first video on on any platform doing what you do now um i know the first video i posted was on instagram 
could tell you all about the first video I posted. Uh, yeah, but please I do. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was about um, around two years ago. It might be less than that. It might be a little more than that. I really don't know. Mm. I'd have to scroll all the way back through about seven hundred videos since then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the first video I posted, I I started all this out of like kind of a not a necessity, but because I I saw the value in it. Um, if you want, I can tell you the whole story. Give you the whole spiel if you want. Take all that, the deets. Take that ball across the goal line, brother. All the, all of it. Here it is. So, I uh, I was serving as a recruiter with the Virginia National Guard. Um, I went through the recruiting school, and they taught us, you know, how to contact people and all the, you know, things that we learn as recruiters, how to get people in. Um, came back to my duty station after the school and started doing the high school recruiting thing. I'm standing behind a table and talk to some kid about the infantry or shooting machine gun or whatever it was. And I ask him, I'm like, man, this is going really well. I'm going to ask him. And I'm like building up the courage to do this. I'm like, Hey man, what's your Facebook? And he just like looks at me for a minute and he's like, Oh, oh my mom has Facebook. And I'm like, <laughs> thanks you little brat. You know, I didn't say that. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I asked him what he has and he told me Instagram and everything. And I'm like, all right. So I asked, uh, uh, a female that I enlisted, I asked her, you know, do you use Instagram? And she's like, yeah, if we're going to hang out and stuff, we have a group chat that we all message each other on. I'm like, wait, so you're like communicating with each other on this thing? And she's like, yeah. So I'm like, dang, that's probably a good way to like communicate with people that we're trying sure. to get in the military. So that's honestly why I started it. You know, fast forward to now, it's definitely not why I do it now. I do it for, you know, to make people laugh and to make people feel good. And it makes me feel good doing it. Um, but so the first video I did was, uh, you know, the typical 30 some year old dude that's a recruiter in the military trying to make a video that's going to get people to join. So I put my uniform on and I was super serious, like everybody else in a uniform. And I sat there like this with my phone in front of me. And I was like, hello, my name is Sergeant Butterworth and I'm a recruiter in the Army National Guard and blah, 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 blah. And I just went on and on and on. And it was super boring. And, you know, my mom liked it and my wife and a whole bunch of people. So I'm like, man, I, I killed that. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I made like three or four more of those. And then at that point, I realized like, this is dumb. Yeah. Like, this is what everybody's doing. Right. So I like to joke around. I like to, you know, be funny and sarcastic and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, I'm just going to be myself. Like, I'm not going to break any rules. I'm not going to do anything that would make the uniform look bad or myself or my family. So. I'm just going to I'm just going to try to be funny and and do things that I think people want to watch and it worked out pretty well doing it that way. I say so, man. I mean, yeah. I it it's crazy to think about you coming into this and trying to do I guess what would be like the typical army thing of like you know, it's just how we talk when we're briefing or talking in an official capacity like it's very deadpan. Right. It's you know, even the jokes are kind of like you can laugh at it with your lips together type of jokes like, <laughs> you know, uh, oh, he made a sports reference. Um, so like the flip from that to what you what you do now and what the content you make now is is I have to imagine that it took a lot of a lot of work to kind of get past a lot of the barriers. I know personally. It was kind of a vulnerable feeling putting on the uniform and showing people how I really want to act when I think something is funny and how yeah. that manifests in me was kind of <clears throat> terrifying because, you know, especially you're, you're, uh, you know, a senior NCO, you know, chief warrant officer, when you do want to <clears throat> act like that and you want to cut loose and, and really commit to a joke. Cause really in, in all honesty, if you want to, if you're, want your content to do well you have to be committed to yeah, to absolutely. the joke you cannot half tell these you you have to throw in some some pizzazz i guess you know a little little joie de vivre to kind of make people yep. believe that it's funny you know that's why we watch comedians on tv so uh yeah man i can't imagine how much of how much work that was for you personally to kind of arrive at that place where you're like i've got to step out and i've got to be more than just a guy talking on his phone. <clears throat> yeah. I, uh, 
so I started making the videos and I, I think even in the beginning, my, my chain of command and recruiting and all that, they were like, man, this guy's wasting so much time doing this. Uh, and so then it, it became a thing where it's like, Hey, you're not making enough phone calls. Cause that's something that we use in recruiting to like quantify the work that you're doing and how many people you're reaching and all that. Do they, is our cold so call still, like, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but our cold call no, no, is still good. like a significant piece of it. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, highly successful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that tracks. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, I said Roger Sargent to the, the guy that told me to d make more phone calls, and I did that, and I'm like, well, this is kind of, this is silly. I, I did it, but then I'm like, you know what, I'm going to make a video, and I'm going to do it in a way that's going to make people laugh, but it's also going to give them a little taste of what the military is and maybe a tiny little bit of information. Yeah. And so that video I did got, I think, 2 million views or so. God. And I ended up enlisting like two or three people off of that one video. Wow, that's amazing. So once I did that, then, you know, I told my uh, NCOIC what's going on, you know, my boss. And he's like, don't worry about those phone calls anymore, buddy. <laughs> so, nice. Got yourself out of the cold calls. Fast forward yeah, 10 years and now uh, recruiting station commanders are harassing their recruiters about not making enough TikToks. Like, how many TikToks? Yeah, hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, do they look at the ones that, like, don't have a platform or don't post and, like, boy, you need to keep up with, you know, or take some notes on these other guys? Yeah, it's it's really, uh, I mean, everywhere I go. So I go around the country and I kind of train this and, and I put on training for this and talk about it. But it, it's really, it's, it's dependent on the person, you know, if you can have one person in one recruiting organization that is very good at social media and knows how to use it to the advantage of the entire company or battalion or company, whatever it is, you know, it, it's going to benefit everyone. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't enlist millions of people, but I can definitely say that a lot of people maybe considered the military from watching my videos, just like Josh's videos and these other guys that do the same thing. So sure. it, it has a lot of impact. But it's it's much more than that to me now. Yeah, absolutely. It it really, you know, and I think for a lot of companies even because you know, like you cruise TikTok and and Instagram, and you realize like, you know, there's some instances where you or I are more successful than a restaurant chain or an actor yep. even who's like trying to get on TikTok and trying to get a following yep. there, and it's them right and they kind of have that notoriety of being whatever restaurant or food line or company that is known the world over but they're not playing the game of vying for people's attention which is ultimately you know if you're making short form content or you start in short form content that's the game it is how fast can i grab your attention put it in a headlock and give it a noogie and give it back right. to you 60 to, you know, 120 <laughs> seconds later, you know, yeah. that is not something that everyone can do. Um, do you, you've kind of in the last, I, I think it's been about a year, you have kind of rolled out what I think you're probably most known for, which is the, um, the ASMR response <laughs> back and forth. Um, for anyone who who doesn't know, which I can't imagine there's a lot of people who don't know listening right now, but, uh, it's the it blonde is, Mercedes it, chick, right? It's, it's normally yeah, <laughs> so, like some, like, you know, smoking hot chick who's like doing something to a car, like flicking Mercedes. it a lot. And, Mercedes. Yeah, Mercedes. <laughs> um, and then, uh, Tyler very, very hilariously, uh, does just pretty much repeats it, but it's like a Humvee or an <clears throat> LMTV or something. What gave you that idea? And like, how on earth, like, that's another, uh, uh, like, just take us down that, that hole, man. Cause that's, that's an amazing content line you've rolled out. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so I didn't actually come up with that. Um, I was in, uh, Washington state, uh, doing social media training for them. Um, and so I was doing that. I was at a fair helping them with recruiting. I'm sitting at this fair. There's a Humvee right there that we're sitting in staying out of the sun and my wife sends me a text with that video the first one that i ever did the the blonde mercedes girl yeah um so she sent me that video and it was just her video and she goes you should do this with a uh, a military vehicle and so i'm <laughs> like all right you know my wife tells me to do something i'm gonna do it 
So <laughs> I did it. I had the private that was sitting next to me. Uh, PFC Bates was his name. Uh, I was like, hey, man, I want you to just use this cell phone. I'm going to put these microphones on so it's a little bit better uh, audio. And I want you to just try to match these camera movements that you see them doing with, with the cell phone. Like, pretty simple. Sure. Um, so he did that, and we just did it frame for frame. I, you know, airdropped that to my computer. I edited it up real quick in about 10, 15 minutes, and then I just let it fly. I'm like, that, that'd be a cool video. And so I, I think I had like 30,000 followers um, before I uploaded that video. And so yeah. I uploaded it. And then I think I went back to the hotel room. And back in those days, like I was in, even now, like I'm, <laughs> I always try to find some new concept or new kind of idea, creative way of like putting stuff out there, even if it's just to make people laugh. Um, and so that's what I was focused on then. But I just remember my phone was just like, you know, it wouldn't stop. It's just going on and on and on. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. How long, so I, how long ago was that one? Oh, man. It was. Because that uh, was the first video I ever saw of yours. Like that, that was the first one that came across my feed. I honestly, I don't know. I think it was, uh, like early last year sometime. No. Maybe yeah. Sure. Early last year. Uh, it was, it was warm in Washington. I know that sure. it wasn't, wasn't too cold. Okay. So sometime around then. Um, but so anyway, I, I saw the notifications and then I'm like, before I went to bed, I had gained like 2000 followers or something. I'm like, wow, that's incredible. You know, this I gained that many in, in that short of time I got up the next morning and I had gained like 10,000 followers. And then fast forward to the next day, I think I gained like off of that video alone, I think I gained about 90,000 followers. Oh, yeah. So then I'm like, this is this is a good <laughs> idea. We have so many vehicles in the military. I'm just going to go around and flick everything. <laughs> <laughs> what can I flick um, next? <laughs> yeah. So I found the uh, the dealership their page and I found all the videos and I'm like, wow, they, they definitely, I mean, they were putting out a video a day at the time of this kind of content. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep doing these. And so I did. And then I just try to find the next thing. And I got a new, uh, a new line of parodies that are coming out soon that I have not released yet. <laughs> pretty good. Excellent, Man, you got a lot of content coming. Looking forward to that. Yeah, what is, uh, before we started, you said you had a, a funny story of something that just happened a moment ago. Yeah. So, um, have you seen the videos of it's a female that is wearing yoga pants, classic, and she's standing behind the like it's usually like woodworking equipment, and she's standing there and she's like standing like this, like at a weird camera angle to where it's not really making sense what she's showing you, if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. she goes, "Here, I can give you a better, <laughs> here we better go. visual here. Yeah, baby." <laughs> Here you go. So she's doing like this, and she's like, "This is a wood miser LT five thousand, and this is how we cut our wood." <laughs> and that's what they would do for literally everything <laughs> that they post in in their wood shop or whatever they're selling. Instead of holding something up and saying, "This is Morgan Wallen's tea, and it's really good," sure they do. <laughs> this is Morgan Wallen. <laughs> that's what sells, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm like, oh, the old algorithm stance is yeah. what I, the what I said. Stance. <laughs> so I, uh, so I saw that video and I'm like, all right, this is hilarious. I was, I was actually standing down here where my little, my cameras and lighting and everything is. And I was, I was messing with the camera that's right in front of me that I record my YouTube videos with, and I had just seen that video. So I took my cell phone and I set it right here, and I, I filmed myself, and I'm like standing at the awkward angle and I'm holding the camera and I'm like, this is the Sony FX3 and this is what I use to record my YouTube videos or whatever. <laughs> and I, I posted it. Well, that was probably two, three weeks ago. Fast forward to like literally an hour ago, that uh, page, uh, which is like a woodworking thing, they messaged me and they said, hey, you need to tag us in this content. And I was like, okay, sure, no problem. <laughs> So I tagged them and I, I tagged them in both videos that I've done of, of that kind of parody thing. And I got to talking to the person, I think it was her husband. And I'm like, hey man, I just wanna let you know, like your, your marketing and what you're doing for advertising is genius. Like in all seriousness, like yeah. it's working. Your, your page is growing. It seems like your business is growing. You 
you're you're using what you got you know what i mean it was yeah. it's being successful yeah. <clears throat> but what's what's interesting is after i talk to the guy a little bit more i find out that he's a police officer and his wife is a police officer as well wow and so that to me the most interesting part is like that shows how similar all of our sense of humor is in this kind of space like it military is. law enforcement all that and so he's like yeah man we totally were doing it as like a, a funny thing like it's just we <laughs> thought it was funny and i'm like yeah. perfect that, and that's, were your okay. were your videos doing better than theirs i feel like if the the original person is reaching out to you saying you need to tag me in that oh, yeah. it's because yours is doing better than theirs and they're trying to like ride the coattails right and, and naturally so like normally i do try to tag people that i that i do the parody videos of because honestly i I think some people think that I'm making fun of them or just straight up like mocking them. I'm mocking the idea of it or I'm mocking the, the like how silly it is. I'm not yeah. making fun of the person and nor do I want people to think that I'm making fun of them because I'm not. Like I, I, I legitimately think that what they're doing is hilarious or creative and I'm like, I just want to try this myself because <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Yeah. Dude, the one, I just saw it today, but it's you strap the broccoli to your forehead and it's those guys doing the weird like i yeah. whatever oh, yeah. thing <laughs> and then it goes to you and you have the broccoli hair oh that was yeah. whatever they were doing in that video i had never seen those before but you're right i was just like what on earth is that yeah i think you made oh, you made a good point though like it does feel so unnatural to want to like let those feelings of those like those jokes and that sense of humor come forth in in our line of work like just whatever first responders and military and type stuff the the irony of that is that it's in almost all of us i sure. okay. very few of the people that i work around or have worked around for the last 16 years uh, i mean i've worked with my share of like sticks in the mud but for the most part for the large part everyone's funny everyone like you know you get into a good squad or on a good team or on a good staff everyone's cracking jokes you know what i mean everyone yep. wants to, to laugh behind the scenes but this belief that in real life we have to or well when we're conducting business that it's just deadpan all the time especially for a lot of the army's like public facing stuff that they've done i think they're kind of maybe catching on to it a little more with you know yeah, not to gloat, but like our success kind of showing them like, hey, maybe it pays to show people that we have a personality a little bit. Um, <clears throat> you're 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 a pretty integral part of that, man. It's it's amazing to see how wholesome you've managed to keep everything the whole yeah. way through. Uh, that's one of the first things I usually tell people about you that are surprised that we know each other is like, yeah, man, Tyler has 100 percent not let it go to his head <laughs> and that's yeah it's surprising you know what i mean it's it's easy i think you know i felt it you know when when you have people coming up to you when you're walking around a px or something like that and they're recognizing you or they're reaching out and asking you for career advice you know but yeah yeah you've kept it cash money man i'm i'm impressed by that <laughs> yeah well thank you i uh i don't know i i just i enjoy doing it and i i I realized that a lot of people watch it. I mean, the kind of the like defining moment for me was the when I started getting all these messages. So I, I meet people everywhere I go. I mean, the the flight attendant on the last flight that I was on, she recognized me and came back and like sat next to me and you know talked to me for a while about my videos and all this. Like it's just really neat connecting with people like that. But yeah. I got a message of uh, somebody that was. I guess their mom was in the hospital and, and ended up dying from, from cancer. And they said that wow. when she died, she was watching my videos and it was making her smile. So it's like, oh. I, I'm, I'm literally never going to stop making these videos because of yeah. that. Yeah. And, and I, I won't, I mean, it's, that's, that's what makes all of this worth it. You know, anything that comes as a result of this is great, but I just like doing it because it makes other people feel good. Yeah. That really, definitely. That, you know, it's so, I think it's so easy to want to make your content more, I'm trying to think of how to frame it. Like, you know, there's been times where I've wanted to make content that maybe pushes the envelope a little bit more or is, goes to maybe a darker place. And it's, 
you know, it's it's I think it always serves th- the community better to keep humor and comedy. I mean, you know, both of us, we're, we're comedic creators. Right. So that's yeah. that's kind of like our 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 linchpin thing. But mm-hmm. keeping that as your focus and keeping people laughing, you know, and not, you know, there there's always a temptation, like when some kind of like people want to want me to react when when something right. terrible happens or like we want you to like. They don't even ask. They're very demanding. Like, hey, you know, when, when, yeah, when the, uh, you know, not to bring the vibe down, but when the airman went in front of the White House a couple months ago and lit himself on fire, I had people in my DMs telling me that it was my duty to respond and make some kind of like sweeping statement about that and divulge my personal thoughts. And expecting I, it <laughs> yes yeah it was like where's your video about this and i was like there is no there is no my video about that that's not right no. that's yeah. not what i'm here to do you know what i mean but um do you kind of just going back to like your 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 maybe your inspiration a little bit you talked about watching netflix and not making it like a a study event for you um which is good i think it's mm-hmm. good to unplug and just like hey i'm just gonna receive this as uh as right. entertainment for sure uh, what what do you get inspired by? Do you have any like prominent? Uh, I know you know doing comedy. Do you have a comedian or or maybe a writer that kind of touches your soul in a way that's like oh, I want to I want to kind of shape my voice to that a little bit. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I have a a writer or a comedian or anything like that. I I I grew up watching any movie with Will Ferrell in it. Um, sure. I, yeah. I, Hell I yeah. It, he is hilarious. <laughs> Child like of the two thousands. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like the, you know, I, I grew up watching Mad TV and SNL. It was like a big treat if we got to watch that on, I think Mad TV was Friday night. I can't yeah, remember. yeah, yeah. We got to watch that and then Saturday Night Live on Saturday night. And that was like a, a big deal. We, As a family, we would all sit and watch that. And, mm-hmm. you know, to me, that's back when things were funny and everything wasn't politicized and, and negative in like the negative undertones about whatever it was that, that is funny, you know? Sure. So... I think that kind of like sketch comedy like that, uh, the Will Ferrell style, the Saturday Night Live. Um, I will tell you, I'm I'm getting ready to start one of the new series things. I'm waiting on a wig to get here. Uh, <laughs> Break some, out the uh, wig, baby. Some different shirts. Uh, <clears throat> and I actually will challenge anyone that is thinking about doing this as well, based on my idea to try it. Um, I am going to start doing, I love to cook, I love to bake. Uh, for real in real life. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find all of my favorite Martha Stewart recipes, and then I'm going to recreate them myself with my Martha Stewart wig, my pastel <laughs> shirt on, and I'm going to do it in her style, the way that she does all of her cooking videos. I love yes. <laughs> and I think it'll be pretty good. <laughs> that sounds awesome. That's amazing, man. Yeah. I love that. Do you, uh, I'm kind of wondering, so I've known Josh my entire life. And yeah. he's always been like a theatrical, artsy person. So a platform like TikTok or Instagram where he can just post something and then kind of blast it to a bunch of people. Him being successful on that, it's always just kind of made sense to me. Yeah. What were you like, like kind of growing up? Were you artsy, theatrical, or is this all like a giant surprise to you that um, you found some success like this? That's a good question. Um that's a good question. Nice. Uh, <laughs> good job. So I, uh, <laughs> solid. I was, uh, I played the violin in uh, elementary school and maybe middle school. Um, really? But, but yeah, yeah. Wow. I don't know. I don't even know how to hold one at this point. <laughs> Can but, you still shred? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, real shred. And didn't you hear me on the intro? Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was all him. <clears throat> um. But no, I did. I was in uh, chorus all the way through elementary school, all the way through high school, and I actually was in an a cappella group where we went over to Europe and we sang in the Vatican and we did all this kind of stuff. So, wow, I do like to sing. Lord yeah. drop. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, seriously. Yeah. So I, I listen to music a lot. I, I I would say that is my artsy side. Uh, okay. That in the the videography at this point, but. Definitely. No, I think in terms of like blowing up on social media and getting a lot of views and popularity and all that. No, I didn't. I didn't expect that at all. You know, I I talked to my buddies that I was cops with and I was a detective with and they're like, 
who are you, man? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. See, I've kind of been a goober my entire career. So when people find out that I do this now, they're like, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you were a clown before you were doing that. So uh, this tracks for you, man. It's very on brand behavior. Yeah. Um, what about your, uh, like, before all this, what was your level of uh, just like the, the editing and the sound design and color and just recording things? Like, do you have any sort of. No, never into that growing up or anything. Just all a result of the I, success. I was, into, I was into taking pictures and like time lapse photos and all that when I got home okay. from uh, Iraq in two thousand eight. Sure. Um, but that was like just something I was trying to learn. I thought it was cool, but you know that has nothing to do with video or sound design. Video. Sure. If you think that a photographer and a videographer are the same, then you are horribly mistaken. Oh, I can't imagine. Right. Um, <clears throat> but no, it's, I didn't know anything about that. I've never taken any college classes about, you know, acting or videography right. or anything like that. You know, so I, anything I that you've learned that. or anything, you know, now has just been trying to kind of keep up with, you know, I guess the success that you've had, just trying to take it to the next level, keep the quality up and everything. Yeah. I mean, the, the idea for me is that I want to, I want to always continue to make better things. I want sure. it to be one. I want it to be funny. I want it to be funny, informative. That's like a, a winning combination. Sure. Um, but then I also want it to be something like that looks good. Like I want to be proud of it. I don't want it to be something that I just slap together to slap something together. Right. Um, because I think as like creators, we can, we can definitely feel like that sometimes. And I know I do when I, I know when I film a video and I'm like, yeah, I'll just put it out there. And then I do. And I'm like, why'd I do that? Like, I was just, <laughs> didn't need to do you, that. you rush it to Can failure because you... you're eager to just yeah. get it out there sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. it's not, even if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, like it's not necessary. I don't, I don't need to do that. And, right. and nobody does. Like you don't, you shouldn't feel like you have to do it. If it's taking the fun out of it and you're not actually being creative, then there is, right. shouldn't be it's, a job it's kind of a two-parter to that question undoubtedly your content is is by far not just in military content but on the platform as as a whole on tiktok yeah. uh youtube and instagram everywhere else you post your polish level is miles ahead of where most people are at was there a point because i know you said your first video you just gave it to a kid and, and had him film for you at what point were you like we need to up the stakes and we need to add we need to start working with a, a real camera and I want to start adding, you know, I, I was blown away when we were making content last year. Like this dude has a veritable arsenal of just gadgets and attachments and, and gimbals and stuff. At what point were you like, let's, let's take this to the next level. Um, I think it was learning the different style of content. Like, so I, I'm like, all right, I have a phone. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to get the newest iPhone because it has a good camera. I, I learned that. I researched, you know, how to make better videos with a cell phone, with an iPhone, whatever it was at the time. Then I learned about how to make better sound quality with an iPhone. And once I kind of like master something like that, then I'm going to move on to the next thing. Sure. So then I got a, uh, a full frame mirrorless camera. The Sony A7C was my first ever video camera that I got. Yeah thing's a monster and so i learned that thing um i learned it pretty well i used it and then i realized the limitations on it uh sure. of what i couldn't do and then that's when i jumped to the you know much the sony fancier the sony yeah. fx3 is what i have now nice. um, can you can you nerd out over that stuff like are you a gearhead you just love all the yeah. gadgets and it, everything it, if i turned this camera around right now and you saw all the stuff that was in front of me do you, it you, <laughs> no, I'm not going to. It's all good. Trademark it's all good. Copyright. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I want to reveal the secret um, sauce. Yeah, no, I can't do it. Um, but no, learning that kind of stuff, like it, it is. It's like I could watch YouTube videos, and I do. I watch YouTube videos about like an ND filter. I'll watch four YouTube videos about an ND filter until I understand how it works and which one is the best one for what I'm looking for. Yeah. Sure. And then I just go on to the next thing lighting sound design uh a digital slider um yeah, just master one yeah. thing at a time yeah. and then move love on it, to man. the next I, I mean it's it's exciting like I, I love every aspect of it like the 
the idea of like standing here and making a video, like if I was recording with this right here, like that's only going to do so much. But if I add in multiple cameras and I have stereo sound as opposed to just mono sound, like it is just, it's so much more appealing for the viewer. And so if sure. I can do that to make somebody's experience funny and they're like, wow, this is really good. Then to me, that's, that's worth it. That's what I like to do. Sure. Do you, when you blend quality, uh, audio visual with quality content that's a winning formula exactly yeah man yeah. it's it it complements what what you're already doing which was already very funny and had that ability to just do crazy numbers and make people laugh and hold like i said put their attention in a headlock you were doing that without without all the stuff and i think that's why you've continued to do well is continuing yeah. to make great content and coupling that with adding a pristine quality to that content man it's it's insane to watch, man. Yeah, man. Thanks. I, appreciate um, it. I, I, I love to do it. I mean, I, I, I legitimately love doing making videos. I, I really do. And that's ve that's very apparent, man. Like, I, I want to tell you, like, having been making content for as long as you and I have, like, you start to see creators. I've even felt it like they don't love what they're making all of a sudden and they feel kind of tied to it, you know? Yeah. And, you know, a lot of that is the algorithm saying like, no, 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 you're going to make the thing. You're not going to make, you're not going to start anything else. You're going to make the thing. Um, yeah. But the, the joy and the, and the, 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 the vigor that you have for, for the content that you make is always very apparent, man. So, yeah, I, I, when I first started, I remember that you were the first like military creator that I watched in the very beginning and i'm like dang i want to be like that dude he's he's hilarious look at he's you now soft. big dog <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. look at you now how many times about... have, how many times have y'all met just the just once the once or... yeah yeah okay. just the once yeah. and i remember when i uh when i met you for the first time and i remember what you said later on like after we met um i think after we like we filmed some stuff and then we went and had dinner but when I first met you, like I, as the viewer of your stuff for so long, I'm like, man, this dude's going to be hilarious. Like he's going to be like you <laughs> yeah. know, Robin Williams or whatever in person. But then I met you and you're just like, Hey man, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I, I remember I like, I met you, I shook your hand and I went back there and we're all like Jacoby, Fiscato and I, and I think, uh, is that everybody that was there? Uh, there was one, there was another bald guy. I can't remember his name, but he was nice. Uh, Smith. Smith. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so we all, we're all standing there and you were changing or something. And I was like, what do you guys think? And we're all like smiling at each other. And you're like, I mean, he's, he's like, he's more quiet than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> where was, what, what was, where'd y'all meet? Like what were I, I had about? a work trip in DC yeah. and he's near DC. And I told him, okay. I was like, maybe a day before, it may have been the day I flew out. I was like, Hey man. Yeah. I'm going to be close. Let's do a thing. Oh, was, dude, that was a big deal. I like, <laughs> I like told my wife, I told my kids like, yeah, I'm going to meet the dude. I'm going to meet the guy that the I've dude. been watching forever. It was and a big so deal for I, me too, man. I was super excited. I mean, we all were. Jacoby drove down from Pennsylvania, like yeah. three hours away or whatever. Yeah. We made it was a big deal. But. We, we, we hung out for like five minutes and instantly we we're all getting in uniform and we were just making, we made five or six videos that day. Uh, yeah, nice. it was like a whirlwind, but it, it was amazing. It, it was really, it made me very like wishful that we could, we could just like zip out and do that on an afternoon someday. Uh, yeah, man, what a good time. Yeah. But yeah, man, I, uh, again, just, just blown away by your humility and all your success, man. You're, you know, I was kind of telling Cody cause he was like, man, I, I'm kind of nervous about meeting this guy, you know? And, and I was like, dude, it's comp uh, any, any fears you have about like, you know, it's, it's very much, you're, you're a very uh, relatable guy and, and keep it, keep it cash money. I, uh, I don't know. I think that's the weirdest part about all this is that I, I do wherever I go, I'm recognized and people want to take pictures with me and all that. Sure. And sure. For anybody that's watching, watching this, I encourage that instead of standing there and staring at me awkwardly, come over <laughs> and ask if you can take a picture because yeah. it's or taking a, you're just like, we see you when you do that. <laughs> yeah. Or it's Josh said last week that he was in a restaurant and somebody just zoomed in on him from across the they restaurant. They did. And I was, it and like, oh, I was on a date at Buffalo <laughs> Wild Wings with my wife and uh, I would get home later that night and I flip in TikTok and I see a video of me across the restaurant. Someone's like, I found him. 
It's like, dude. Yeah. Ugh. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> well, shoot, man. Um, if you got time, man, I would love to uh to have you participate in our our question portion. Uh, do some sure. quick Q yeah. and A, and we'll send you on your on your merry way, so you can get back to making great content here. Uh, Sounds good. Cool. Uh, for those of you listening, uh, if you go to our description, uh, you can join our Discord. We've got a channel in there specifically dedicated for question and answer. Uh, you can jump in there, ask us anything you want, uh, and we will, uh, if it's a salient question, we will read it on the show and perhaps give our uh, our very sincere and definitely not jokey responses. Um, you might get red. You might get red, uh, as Cody <laughs> likes to say. Um, let's see. This one comes from Brad Rules One. Brad Rules One. Thank you for writing into the show. Doyle hey, Rules. Brad. <laughs> um, this is, so I'll expand this to all gas stations. It is shop at specific, but Cody, uh, you, you you can you can weigh in on this as well. What is your favorite roller item from the shop at QT Seven Eleven? So anything that's on the the mm. gross rotisserie <laughs> grill. Uh, I'm going to come out with my answer because I uh, it's not even a question in my mind. Cheeseburger hot dogs are a phenomenal gift from God, and I will die on that hill. If you, you take a burger patty and, and you just <laughs> knead it up into a little weenie and you put a little I'm, cheese I'm, in that. Put oh, man. oh, man. Oh, man. Man, oh, man. You're like working it into shape. I'm, like. I'm, <laughs> you get a little Play-Doh snake spin, you know what I'm saying? Man, oh man, okay. that, that cheeseburger okay. hot dog is coming for me, man. <laughs> That's not my answer, Tyler. <laughs> you got one? He's like, well, that was um, weird. Yeah, we really got into that one. Uh, I have never had a roller item at any military base ever. Yeah. In 18 years. Not, never. not at like seven, what about a gas station? 7 Eleven? Like nothing? Oh, yeah, gas ever. station. I've had the like, taco and cheese like the taquitos taquitos okay yeah 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 Yeah. those are man at uh i got a a, without question favorite it's that quick trip and it's like the hot dog that's wrapped in a pancake okay (laughs) okay (laughs) those are fire bro hold on (laughs) man those are a breakfast breakfast delight a little bit of syrup dunking in there dude they are really good they are they are. Really? I do recommend that, unlike Young Sheldon. Do go get one of those. Do go get a pancake. They're very good. <laughs> pancake corn dog. Absolutely. I also, nice. I will say, egg rolls are never good off of those things. The only time it's good to eat an egg roll is from a restaurant. Anytime, there's too many egg rolls that are like out in the wild. And I love a good, decently made egg roll. You put but that it, on a t-shirt. There are too many egg, egg rolls out in the wild. Egg roll in the wild. <laughs> there's too many egg rolls out in the world. But... Uh, yeah, not not eating the egg roll off the rotisserie. What about just a regular ass uh, hot dog? That's oh, not bad. Yeah. That's yeah. not bad. Yeah. Would I you, love hot dogs. Is there a my favorite way to eat a hot dog is off the grill? I really yeah. don't like boiled hot dogs. Like the idea of like oh, yeah, they're we all about this. just taking a fucking <laughs> bath together. You said what is what is the most unappetizing way to warm a weenie, and it's <laughs> to drop it in some hot water. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That I know. Let's boil them. Let's boil them. Yeah. Any, it still looks uncooked. It's just yeah. hot. Like yeah. It's, yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. This mostly warm weenie. No char. Grilled hot dogs are delicious, though. Yes. I, I agree. I agree. Got to get that char on them, baby. Uh, thanks, Brad Rules. Thanks, Brad Rules. Uh, let's see. Here's another one. Good morning, gents. Chief, I spent some time carrying the M249, so the saw squad automatic weapon, uh, and I loved it due to me being a large human. What are your thoughts? Uh, and f- for both of you, or all of you, um, what's y'all's favorite weapon system? That you and do you have one? Do you have one, Cody? Also, they extend that to you. Uh, <laughs> let's see. We'll we'll stop it right there. Tyler, I know you were infantry, um, so you definitely, I'm sure, have probably maybe a favorite out there. I'll I'll kick it to Cody first because Cody's a civvy, a dirty civvy. <laughs> um, do you have like a favorite like setup or or rig? I know I know you are, are a occasional uh- firearm appreciator. Man, yeah. I mean, I've shot limited fire. I was gonna give a a Call of Duty answer. My favorite setup in the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. Because then, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna go MP5. That thing always ripped. 
yeah. good results for me. So that's true. A little gold MP5. Um, I can only speak to what I know. So <laughs> I, we shoot it at our like grandpa's land, but I always felt like those were like old wooden revolvers and like, I don't know, man. Old Never guns. shot the saw. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Tyler, you got a favorite? I do think the scars um, are badass. Scars are cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah those are. Scars are cool. Um, I've always been a uh, 240 Bravo back when it was oh, still a baby. Bravo. It's a Lima now. Oh, I've baby. Been a 240 guy. Nice. Nice. Big boy. Yeah. It's a big, bulky it. boy. What is that? It's like a saw, but it shoots. Yeah, it's a, it's okay. a machine gun, but it shoots 762 instead of uh, 556. Okay. So actually, a very crisp pop to that one i kind of i do kind of like that one that's a good one love it yeah. does that got like the belt like hanging off of it yeah yep. okay yeah okay. yeah yeah for sure it's bulky it's very bulky but it's it'll it'll give you a tick you gotta be a certain a certain height and weight i assume to uh, <laughs> usually wield one of those usually they'll either give it to the big guy in the squad or as a joke they'll give it to the littlest guy and that's funny <laughs> to watch <laughs> um yep. i don't know that i have a friend i mean like i like shooting an m4 just good old you know the starter you know um yeah have you shot uh i know i know you've kind of been doing a little bit more like admin type stuff but uh have you shot the new uh issued uh, sidearms yet the M- you know m17s I, I think i haven't have you shot one i have my buddy actually bought one he's a he's a uh, company commander and he was like nice. you know it's, you know issued weapons so i might as well get used to it so he bought one there they're they're pretty nice yeah, they're pretty nice. Yeah, no, I, I I had a Sig uh, on my second deployment, a P two two nine, I want to say it was, and that was that was really nice. Nice. The Sigs are stick. I really want just like a nine millimeter. The first gun I ever bought was a Springfield XD forty caliber, five inch, way too big of a gun. Like as yeah, the first gun I was gonna buy, I was like, it's, give me the big one. Yeah. And ammo is expensive. It doesn't make any sense to have, and I really want to trade it in. <laughs> but yeah. the the nine millimeter six hours are sick. I really like those. Nice. Yeah, they are. That one came from Gimpin ain't easy. Gimpin ain't easy. Thank you for writing in today. Um, I'm gonna let that be it. I just want to say a uh, huge, huge thank you to our guest Tyler Butterworth today, man. It means so much that you tuned in with us. Yeah, bud. Uh, do you yeah, have thanks, thanks man? Buddy. Yeah, yeah. Do you have anything before you go that you want to plug or that tee up or or just where people can find you on a daily basis? Uh, nothing to plug or tee up. Uh, Butterworth to syrup on all the platforms if you want to go check out my stuff. Um, but the only thing I would say is that, not to sound like Mr. Rogers or anything, but there's a lot of negativity out there on the internet. And one, you don't have to believe everything that's out there, and you don't need to consume all the negative stuff. There's plenty of positive stuff out there that you can you can listen to. So Facts. Focus on that, not the negative stuff. Man. That's great. I love that. I love that statement. I'm going to carry that with me for the rest of the week, man. Um, hey, Wait, for, can, you re- can you repeat that? <laughs> yeah, I'll just write it all down. Uh, <laughs> hey, I want to thank you guys for tuning into the show this week. Uh, episode 21 kind of had to uh, frago a little bit and run it on my show, but it'll be available everywhere. You normally listen to the show this week. I uh, want to thank Cody also for being my ride or die. Once again, um, always killing it. And thank you again to Tyler. Want to wish you guys yeah, Baja blessings over all your little many, heads. Many Baja blessings. Many Baja blessings. Have a good week. We'll see you next time. <laughs>